In this video, I want to do some clarifications based on my previous video about four rendering improvements in Blender 5.0. And I specifically want to talk about the issue of color spaces because I've gotten a series of comments that let me know that there's still some room for clarification and understanding into what's going on with these color spaces. Among the handful of comments that I got that are sort of leading to this video for clarification was one commenting on the copper teapot example I gave in the previous video, showing how its saturation improves quite a bit when you switch from the old Rec 709 to the newer Rec 2020. The criticism basically was that I didn't understand what was going on and there was a bug, that both of the renderings should have been the same, that switching from one working space to another shouldn't cause that kind of a saturation change. Well, I'm going to show you why that reasoning and that comment is wrong. But I want to wrap up in this conversation another concept that I've seen of people thinking that just having a larger internal color working space, what's called a scene referred working space, is just going to give you better saturation in your scene, or, or that's one of the goals. Having a larger working space is not just about giving you greater saturation. That can happen under some circumstances. For instance, the physical conductor example of the copper teapot getting you greater saturation. But the issue of using a larger color space is not just about more saturation. The issue is that having a larger working space allows the ray tracing to be more accurate and sometimes that might lead to more saturation and other times it won't. It will lead to sort of shifts in the shading. So let's go ahead and look at some examples that will demonstrate this. So here's a really simple example that I've created to help demonstrate this. This is using sRGB and everything that we're going to be looking at is through sRGB because that was the whole point of going over this in the previous video where I talked about questions of using larger color spaces when you're still going to be using sRGB. So I'm going to extend that. So in this situation, I've got these four basic colors and they're kind of earthy tone type of colors. They're sort of muted. They're not terribly saturated. And if we convert from Rec 709, Let's come down here and take a look at this. We're using Rec 709 as the working space and I'm using AGX, but my display device is still sRGB. So if we take a look at this rendering and then we compare it to the same rendering where we simply switch the working space from Rec 709 to Rec 2020, we get this. They're virtually identical. So in this situation, switching from Rec 709 to Rec 2020 or ASUS CG, didn't do anything for us because there's nothing really in the scene that's pushing the boundaries of our color space from an internal calculation standpoint. If if I select this and we take a look at these colors, I've got these four colors. If we take a look at the red, it's really quite muted. Our saturation is down to 0.25 and the value is at 0.5. So these colors are well within the color space of just about any color space out there. But if we go and we amp up the, the saturation. We take the saturation up to 0.5, for instance, and then we take a look at the same example using Rec 709 as our internal color space compared to Rec 2020, we get this. Now, in this particular case, if you looked carefully, you saw something happen. Let me switch back to Rec 709 and then back to Rec 2020. And down here, you could see that a little bit of something happened. So what we're beginning to witness here is the fact that there is a difference in the internal calculations of the rendering process that change when you give the renderer a much larger working space that's not resulting in just something of greater saturation. The renderer, when it's unbounded by a constrained working space, is allowed to come to sort of a conclusion, if you will, about figuring out the color and intensity of color that are more correct than when it's constrained. And that is the difference that we were seeing is that slight shift down at the bottom. So let's go ahead to one more level of saturation, where for instance, if we took up the saturation and we increased it to say one, so that we're right at the edge of saturation. So here we have the rendering where the colors are clearly much more saturated, and this is Rec 709. So as soon as we switch over to the working space being Rec 2020, we get this. 
And you can see that there was a little bit of a shift down in this bottom region again where the cubes are. Go back to Rec 709 and then back to Rec 2020. And you can see that there was that shifting going on. So we're not necessarily just seeing more saturation. What we're seeing is the renderer coming to a more accurate solution internally. And that is then passed off to the tone mapper to produce the final rendering. So the Rec 2020 version is a more accurate rendering. But so far we've only been using white lights. So let's take a look at what happens when we have different conditions in terms of lighting. So if we switch our focus from just basic white lights, where we're really just looking at color conversion between scenes, and we want to focus on what happens when we apply a larger color working space and we have color lights, this is where things become interesting. So if we come up, we can see that I'm using Rec. 709, that's our baseline, and we're going to switch over our lights. I've got these three area lights, and they are just basic white lights. Let's go ahead and change them to have black body values of 2500. We'll do that for the side over here, 2500. And the middle one here, we're going to go to 9000. So it'll be warm, cool, warm. So here we have this same simple scene with those muted colors, but being lit by lights that are powered by black body emissions. And this is where things get really interesting because those black body emissions really can push the boundary of the color space that you're using. So for instance, if we now switch over from Rec. 709 to Rec. 2020, we get this. Let me switch back to Rec. 709 and then to Rec. 2020, and you see that there is a shift. Here, when we're at Rec. 2020, this is a more accurate representation of what the internal calculations are doing because they're being unbounded by the limited Rec. 709. Those black body colors are very, very bright and saturated. And technically, they're spectral colors that are being converted into RGB equivalents by cycles, and those really push the boundary of Rec. 709 and get clipped and compressed. And so we never truly get the full correct rendering in our final tone mapped sRGB when we're using Rec. 709. So the issue is not that we're getting more saturation. It's that we're getting a more correct rendering because the internal pool of color is not being compressed into the limited Rec. 709. So let's take a look at, at this example again, where we have the more saturated colors. So this is where things really get interesting, because now we have very saturated colors, and we've got the color intensity of our black body emitting lights. Even though we don't see those heavy saturations, the black body internal wavelengths are highly saturated, and they're hitting right up against the boundary if you're using Rec. 709 or, and are being clipped by it. With Rec. 2020, the calculations for those black body emissions could be much more correct. So if we switch over from Rec. 709, which is what this is, to Rec. 2020, we get this. So that's a pretty big shift. And the issue is not that it got more saturated, it's that the color shifted into a more correct rendition of what's happening to this internal pool of calculated color in Rec. 2020 that are then view transformed to sRGB in this case. So ultimately, it's important to understand that this change in Blender is not the same as converting a finished image in Photoshop. In a static image conversion, the goal is to preserve the perceived appearance between two different color spaces. But in a 3D renderer, we're dealing with a dynamic situation where the color space defines the physical limits for the render process. When you convert your space from the old space to the new, Blender performs a color conversion to maintain your input colors. However, the resulting light calculations take a more accurate path, resulting in the visible difference we've just demonstrated, even when the final image is mapped down to a smaller gamut like sRGB. So in other words, a wider working space allows the final sRGB image to be the best, most physically accurate sRGB that it can be. Another thing that I talked about in my video on four rendering improvements in 5.0 that I want to elaborate on in this video is the new sky texture. 
I talked about how its new multi-scatter system improved light when you used that sky texture to produce light for interiors, but I didn't really talk about how it affects nighttime renders, and so we're going to talk about that so here's this bathroom scene that I used, and this is with the Nishita from 4.5, the single scatter. And it, this is with a 20 degree angle. Let's go down to the sun being at a 10 degree angle. Here is five degrees, here's two, and now we've got that really strong cast. And then to zero, and then we go to negative two degrees. So we're going below the horizon now, and then minus four, minus six, and then minus eight. By the time we get to minus 8, Nishida in 4.5 just simply goes dark and we don't get any illumination from it. But this is where really interesting things begin to happen in 5.0 with the multi-scatter mode. Here's an example of this kitchen scene with that copper teapot. And we have the angle of the sun set below the horizon. And again, the original single scatter Nishida didn't handle this very well, and it just gave us these kind of ugly colors. When we switch over to 5.0 and the multi-scatter mode, we get this. And I like this because it produces just much more interesting reflections. If you look at the copper teapot here with Nishida single scatter in 4.5, the reflection through the windows of the sky is just not very interesting, but when we switch it over to multi-scatter in 5.0, it produces just a much more interesting blue reflection in the copper teapot and the other metals. Here's an example that I really like. This is a, an interior scene where I'm focused down on this chess set. There's a reflection of a window behind it, and using 4.5 with the single bounce Nishida, and the sun below the horizon, we just don't get much going on through the window. But as soon as we switch this over to 5.0 multi-scatter, we get this. Isn't that interesting? That blue color just produces such a nice look in this scene. Here's the bathroom scene again. The sky has Nishida from 4.5 single scatter. The sun is set below the horizon, so it goes dark. As soon as we switch this over to 5.0 multi-scatter, we get this. Isn't that amazing? We get a lot more of that rich blue going deeper into the setting sun when you drop it below the horizon. Here's an exterior scene. If you look at the windows on the left, this is single bounce Nishida from 4.5. Look in the reflections of the windows and you can see the sun is just below the horizon and it produces again that sort of a sickly band of burnt orange yellow. As soon as we switch this over to 5.0 multi-scatter, we get this. So let's look at this exterior scene here showing a transition from the sun just setting and going to below the horizon. This is Nishida single bounce in 4.5. And let me start moving the sun down and we'll begin to see how Nishida looks as the sun sets. And then finally we get to it below the horizon and it drops to black. Okay, now let's switch over to multi-scatter in 5.0. So let's take a look at these side by side and then I'm going to progressively lower the sun. Right is 5.0 multi-scatter, and you can see how these two compare until we get to the lowest level, and the right multi-scatter clearly preserves a lot of that sky as the sun drops below the horizon. And when I move the camera to this interior and look through the windows, you see that gorgeous deep setting blue sky, and you just would not get this in 4.5 with single-scatter Nishida.